Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another brand new Star Ace Wonders of the Wild series release. I am beyond excited about this. I love this line. I don't know how many of you out there have been collecting it. I've been collecting it since the line had begun, and it's probably one of my favorite things that I've ever seen come from Star Ace. Of course, I really love the Ray Harryhausen line, but this Wonders of the Wild series has been so awesome and they've had so much variety in this line and continue to have so much variety and one thing that they've been releasing lately and actually have just unveiled two others are prehistoric mammals and uh, they recently unveiled a Smilodon as well as a dire wolf we recently had reviewed their woolly mammoth and we now have the pleasure of checking out the elasmatherium and this might be one of my most anticipated models from this series because I always have just loved the Elasmatherium. I always felt like it was probably one of the coolest prehistoric mammals just from the appearance of it. It's so unique but so spectacular at the same time. So, uh, you know, having a really nice one from Star Ace is definitely very exciting. You can see the box art features a nice image of the model right there. And another thing that's really cool that I really do like about this is the fact that you have like some birds on the top of the Elasmatherium. Just a really cool little addition like that I think adds another dose of realism and just generally more of an appeal to the model. And you can also see something that's really cool that there is another version of the Elasmatherium coming out which you can see right there. You've basically got almost like the springtime version of the Elasmatherium here with this release but there's also this really cool version that's coming out with like a snowy landscape and everything which I honestly don't know which one I would prefer but I'm very excited to check this one out. Again you can see the Wonders of the Wild series logo, Star Ace, X Plus, all of the usual stuff and then if we turn it to the side, you can see a really beautiful image over here, again, of our Elasmatherium. And then if we turn it to the, actually, if you go to the side again, you can see another image over there. But then if you take a look here at the back, you can see we have the Elasmatherium. You have some information on the Elasmatherium itself. Again, all of the information as far as, like, the barcode, the logos, and everything on top of the addition of showing you that there are different versions of this. So there's a brown version, a black version, and a winter version. So I am beyond hyped to pop this box open and check this out. So let's do exactly that right now. So here is the base, and the base definitely looks really nice. You can see kind of similar, if you happen to watch my Woolly Mammoth review, it's sort of similar to the terrain and style of the Woolly Mammoth base, but obviously a little bit different, somewhat of a different terrain. We've got more of like a rocky area and stuff over here, but it does look really nice, very realistic. On top of that, we've also got ourselves the birds, and there are two birds included, and they both look really nice. I have no idea what species they are, but they look very cool cool and very nicely done. We also have the little nameplate here and that's something that I actually did not bring in with my woolly mammoth but uh, again something I have to get back out of the box of the mammoth something I forgot to grab out but you can see again it has the elasmatherium as well as information on the species and of course the star of the show we have our elasmatherium itself Let's move it over here a little bit, and that is absolutely gorgeous. Man, I am just consistently blown away by how good the current lineup from Star Ace for the Wonders of the Wild series are and have been. Like, this is incredible. The Woolly Mammoth, honestly, was probably at this point, I would say, the best model that I've seen from this line, which is really saying something because of how many good ones they've had, but... This Elasmatherium is equally, I would say, as beautiful as that Woolly Mammoth, maybe even a little bit nicer. It really is a fantastic looking version of the Elasmatherium. And yet again, another Sean Cooper sculpt, so you can instantly tell the model's going to be fantastic even without even seeing it. But yet again, it looks gorgeous here at first glance, so let's jump to a closer look at it, as always, and check it out from there. So we will begin here in the head sculpt of our Elasmatherium, and you can see straight away how gorgeous that sculpt is, as well as the paint job. But you have almost like a little bit of a grumpy look here on the face of the Elasmatherium, which I definitely enjoy. You can see the snout is sculpted nicely. Everything seems to have a very dark wash, because you can see how 
it's highlighted the mouth as well as the nostrils. You can also see the eye is gorgeous when it comes to the paintwork, like really nicely placed. And considering how small the eye is, it is very impressive. You can also see a bit of a gloss coat there shining on the eye. And then as you lead up, you of course have that classic elasmotherium horn here, which you can see is nice and large. You also have lots of very nice fine detail within the horn. You can see all kinds of cracks and crevices and also some variation of color. Again, we have that dark wash present on the horn, but you can see variations of browns and stuff. But as you lead out toward the tip of the horn, it definitely darkens to a black. And uh, I think it, you know, just generally really nicely highlights how impressive that horn is. Look at how huge that is. Definitely a very nice looking horn for the Elasmotherium. As you move up here, you can see the ears are sculpted out and you can see all sorts of variation to the fur in the face. You can see scruffier and more fine fur, as well as quite a few different variations of browns and kind of like a lighter tone that's been dry brushed, but it's not totally dry brushed just everywhere. It's kind of like, uh, you know, dry brushed here and there as you move through. You've got a little bit of shaggy fur here on the underside of the head and throat region of our Elasmotherium. As you move back here, you can kind of see a little bit of like folding of the fur and skin right there in the neck because it has its head turned toward its left. So very nice attention to detail on the part of Sean Cooper. You've also got some more really shaggy fur as you lead back into that area. As you lead up here, you could see that kind of like a hump up here on the top of the shoulder area and spinal column of our Elasmotherium, basically on the upper part of the back. You can also see again, lots of really nice detailing when it comes to the fur and you could just see so much variation to the fur as you again have really scruffy really shaggy fur but then areas like this where it's a little bit more fine moving down and it just looks really cool and again really nice variation of color just ever so subtle differences when it comes to the browns and stuff similar to what we had seen on the woolly mammoth as you move down the legs you can see the leg sculpt is really nicely done as you lead down you can kind of make out the elbow there even though it's kind of covered and a little obscured from the fur as you move down into the foot you can continue to see kind of wavy shaggy fur but it definitely becomes a lot more fine as you lead down into the foot you can see the nails themselves themselves are sculpted and painted as you move back up into the stomach region again lots of really scruffy fur shaggy fur moving along and lots of variation as far as the appearance again to the fur goes you've got a pretty big belly here on the underside for our elasmotherium as well definitely showing that he is very healthy very well fed as you move back up here, you can kind of make out the hip bone right here. As you move down, you're not really going to see a whole lot as far as like muscle definition or anything like that because the fur is absolutely hiding all of that and uh, definitely showing that this animal would be staying nice and warm in the area that it currently lives. I'm sure it's pretty cold, so he's definitely got a nice coat of fur on him, which is very obvious when you look at the you know appearance to it as you move through but as you lead down we again transition to much finer fur leading down into the rear leg you can see how these legs are kind of held closer together it sort of looks like the elasmotherium might be walking along or maybe it's just taken a few steps and it's kind of stopped and it's now looking around or maybe taking a bite to eat but as you lead back here you can see again even scruffier fur leading off of the back here of the thighs both thighs you can also see the tail curving in here along the back of the elasmotherium and you can also just like with the mammoth kind of see like how the fur almost looks like it's blowing in the wind which i really like again i just always feel like that's a very realistic appearance to the models that are sculpted by sean cooper and he's done that again here with this elasmotherium as we take a look at the opposing side now of our elasmotherium, you again see all the scruffy fur. You can again see the hip bone up here, the leg nicely as you move down. And again, the fur kind of looking like it's like waving in the wind looks really cool. You again have a very nice looking leg sculpt, nicely sculpted toes and everything as you move down. You can kind of make out some muscle definition within the leg a little bit, or at least some bone structure there to the leg of the Elasmotherium. As you move back up again, you can see the really nice paintwork as you move along. Like I said, lots of variation of color to this as you have all sorts of variations of browns as well as blacks, dark grays, and even a light dry brushing in certain areas. But like I said earlier, it's not like
like consistently placed through the entire model. It's really cool the way that they've painted this out, very lifelike. And again, you can see the big belly of our Elasmotherium because the legs are spread further apart. The leg here is kind of taking a little bit of a step or has taken a step forward. The rear leg is definitely stretched out, which allows us to get a good look at the stomach region, as well as the incredible fur detail over here. Again, such wavy, really cool looking fur detail in the stomach region. But as you move back up here, you can again see the shoulder and everything there, as well as more scruffy fur, more fur kind of blowing in the wind. And again, another really nice looking foot sculpt. And then you lead back up here to the very grumpy look on the face of the Elasmotherium. You can see a very nice light gray sort of dry brushing running down the snout and up here onto the horn. But man, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Like easily one of the nicest Elasmotherium models I have ever seen. No matter where you look at it, it is absolutely a perfect rendition of an Elasmotherium. Again, we also have the nameplate, which we had taken a look at a little bit earlier. It has a very nice soft back and underside to it, which is very high quality, very nice addition to the set, as well as the birds, which you can see there are two birds, both kind of facing a little bit of a different position. You can see one has its head turned toward its right. The other one has its head slightly turned toward its left. The birds look really cool. Again, the sculpt is very nicely done. It's got a very unique appearance to it. So I think with a little bit of research, I should at least be able to come up with what species it is at some point in the near future. I'll definitely have to look into that. But you can see the actual sculpting of the birds is really well done, as well as the paintwork. There's, again, variation of color. You've got lighter tones for the stomach region. You can see some variations of browns and kind of like a nice black dry brushing up here on the upper part. The feathers look really well done on both of the birds. They look very lifelike. The beaks are sculpted. You can see the eyes are painted. We have kind of like a little crest there for the birds as well. And then as you lead back here, you can see the tail feathers. You can see that again, both birds are kind of seated on the back of the Elasmotherium and the tail feathers look fantastic. Look at how nice the actual fine detail of the feathers is. That's just super, super impressive, especially considering the size of these birds. And you can see just as highly detailed here on the underside, even the feet are painted out. So the birds are fantastic. I just need to figure out what species of bird they are. And then we've also got the base, and again, the base sports a very, very realistic appearance to it. You've got all kinds of really nice fine detail when it comes to this sort of rocky formation where our Elasmotherium is kind of walking through. And when you get nice and close, look at how impressive the paintwork is. Like, I would say uh, the paintwork is just as impressive as the Elasmotherium itself. Super, super impressive. You've got all kinds of vegetation here as you move through. You can see even leaves laying down here so some leaves that have kind of blown in you've got some grass and stuff here you also have a nice little area over here with some flowers which looks really cool definitely a very nice uh, again spring like appearance to this base you can also see that we've got a log that's been broken and laying here a piece of a tree and as you move through you hit this little area over here where it looks like maybe we're starting to get a little higher into a mountain or some form of a hill because we start to pick up a lot of small rocks as well as a nice big kind of rock structure over here which sort of looks like we're moving up into a higher elevation as the rocks begin to pick up that's just sort of my take on it and you can see there's a nice healthy dose of those rocks smaller and larger as you move through this area here as well as some more of that grass kind of poking up and again the sculpt is phenomenal the paintwork is absolutely incredible on this base and you also have the underside which again gives you all the information on the model itself but an absolutely awesome base to go with an absolutely incredible elasmotherium and in case you didn't notice when we were taking the closer look there are kind of some footprints there on the base which show you exactly where to put the elasmotherium to help it stand in the right spot but we've also again got the birds now i'm not sure i could figure it out if i looked at the box but i'm not entirely sure where they go but i noticed that they seem to have a magnet on the underside so i'd imagine the magnet will connect somewhere on the elasmotherium letting me know where they stand oh there we go so we found one spot now i don't know which bird is supposed to go where or if there is a specific spot i think they could probably just go wherever Try to go back through, find the other magnet here on, oh, I think I found it. 
Oh yeah, there we go. So there's the other magnet holding our bird on. I didn't even realize I had passed right over it, but now it looks really cool. Again, we've got some birds resting on the back of the Elasmotherium, definitely adding again another dose of realism to this incredible scene. And then you can, of course, put your little nameplate in there just to polish the entire visual off and talk about one amazing museum display that thing is awesome as far as a size goes if you go from the horn to the back leg you're looking at about 10 inches or about 25 and a half centimeters if we go for a height from the ground up to the horn about five and three quarter inches or 14 and a half centimeters and if we go to the back you're looking at right around six inches or about 15 maybe even a little over 15 centimeters and then for a width on the base about i'd say about 10 and three quarter inches or around 27 centimeters maybe a little bit over for a size comparison there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our Elasmotherium from Star Ace. And you can see it does have a very good size to a very impressive size, and by no means is this a small model. Obviously, it's not gigantic, but it's actually, I would say, probably a perfect size for something like this. As always, we have a few random comparisons as we have a Mattel Velociraptor and Dilophosaurus here next to the Elasmotherium. We've also got a few more randoms with the Safari LTDU Tyrannus, the Schleich Diabloceratops, and Collect a Deluxe Dimetrodon, stepping in here for yet another size comparison. Then for another comparison here featuring a different Elasmotherium, we have the Collect a version you know, sizing up next to the Star Ace version. And it's not often that Collect A kind of gets knocked off their pedestal because a lot of the time they usually end up creating a lot of the best figures out there when it comes to different animals, especially prehistoric mammals. However, I can absolutely tell you that the Star Ace Elasmotherium is quite a bit nicer and just generally the entire thing here, the entire scene created is much more beautiful than the Collect Day version. So Star Ace absolutely wins this round. And then for probably the only other Elasmotherium I think I actually have in my collection, if I remember correctly, we have the TNG version here next to the Star Ace version. And even though the TNG version is absolutely gorgeous, I would say previously that would have been the best Elasmotherium in my collection. The Star Ace has absolutely dethroned that one as well and is, in my opinion, I would say the definitive Elasmotherium now in my collection. And because I really wanted to see these two together, here is the model that I recently reviewed from Star Ace, which is the Woolly Mammoth, next to the Elasmotherium, because we have two incredible prehistoric mammals here. And I must say, at this point, I think I can say with confidence that Star Ace really excels when it comes to prehistoric mammals, because the mammoth that we have here is definitely the best mammoth model in my collection. The Elasmotherium is definitely the best Elasmotherium in my collection, so Star Ace in my opinion, currently is killing it with these incredible releases. So this brand new Star Ace Wonders of the Wild Elasmotherium is another incredible release, and in my opinion, a masterpiece yet again from Star Ace. Sean Cooper really is one of the greatest sculptors currently making models. I have a lot now at this point of models that have been sculpted by Sean Cooper, and never have I even come close to being disappointed by any of them. You can see the same thing yet again for this Elasmotherium. The sculpt is incredible and talk about creating an amazing sculpt with a lot of life. You can see that here with this Elasmotherium, especially when you just look at the fur detail, because there is a lot of it. The fur detail is incredible on this, and there's just so much variation of fur, not to mention, just like with the Woolly Mammoth, it kind of has the appearance of the fur sort of blowing in the wind, which I really think helps to kind of transport you into the scene with the Elasmotherium. But no matter where you look, whether it's the fur or even that small amount of skin texture, you kind of seen the face leading up into the snout or the horn the nails everything is as highly detailed and beautiful as it gets on top of that you've also got the really cool birds up
up there on the top. I just love the addition of those. I think it's a really nice touch on the part of Star Ace and Sean Cooper just to add that little element of realism. And even though it's just a minor addition, I feel like it just adds so much to the scene. And you have some amazing paintwork on the Elasmatherium and the birds. They are both very nicely painted. Lots of variation of color. You know, even looking at those, speaking of the birds like I mentioned, you just look at those and there's actually so much color that's been applied to those. So much very nice realistic paintwork which shows you how much Star Ace really cares about their product because they don't go lazy even on a little extra like those birds. They are just as incredible I would say as the Elasmatherium. But the paintwork again of the Elasmatherium just has so much variation of color. Really nice dry brushing washes. Everything and anything you could possibly want to make it look as lifelike as it gets it is all present on the Elasmatherium. You also have a very nice base, which absolutely looks like the type of terrain I would expect to see this animal living. And they've added so much to that as well, not to mention, you know, just generally a lot of very realistic paintwork and a lot of variation of color to that as well. But you have very nice fine detail when it comes to the rocks. You also have lots of very small rocks, larger rocks, grass, different variations of vegetation with flowers and leaves laying around the log and everything again just combines to make a very lifelike very realistic visual for our elasmatherium and again also just kind of pull you into the scene of when this animal was alive so if you are interested in this I could not possibly recommend a model any more than I am with this elasmatherium definitely a must-have if you ask me so I will include a link in the description to where you can purchase one for yourself on big bad toy store or wherever they may still be available again these uh tend to sell out pretty quickly at times so make sure you head on over there grab yourself this amazing elasmatherium while it's in stock and also like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching